Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is your Clear the ramp. 30 seconds. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Printique, aka where I go when I want to order my big ass metal prints as well as photo books. Fun fact, I ordered my first photo book from Printique more than 15 years ago, which is a whole couple of years before I launched Fronosphoto.com. Hello? To say I love printing my own photo books would be an understatement. Here's my custom photo book wall over at my house. And yeah, each one of those books was printed by Printique on real photographic paper, not some cheap, crappy looking copy machine print at all. And here's a look at some of my big ass metal prints at my house as well. Big? Yep. Each print is four feet by six feet, but don't worry, Printique can print as small as five by seven on metal. If you wanna make a lasting impression for yourself, your friends and family, or even for a client, head on over to Printique.com and order yourself some photo books and metal prints. First up, Canon Rumors has shared two very interesting patent filings. One is for a long rumored RF 35 1.2, and the other is for something I've never even considered. My what? A 12 millimeter 1.2. Now more on that idea in just a second, but first, the 35 1.2 is one of those lenses that I would love to have in my bag. In fact, it was once in my bag when I was shooting Sony because Sigma has a 35 1.2 that got the job done, but I digress. If Canon has a 35 one, two up their sleeves, it's going to be expensive. Think 2,500 plus dollars and possibly maybe even redundant. Now I say redundant because the 28 to 70 F2 covers that range. Now I know, I know it's not 1.2, but the freedom of a zoom with the aperture and quality of a prime is hard to pass up. The 35 would be awesome for video and I would 100% add it to my bag, you know, cause I'm, I'm money bags and rich like that. Rich, yeah. On the flip side, a 12 1.2, what in the world would that be good for? Dude, I'm gonna check out the stars later. Yep, astrophotography for one, but also landscapes if you like to go wide, architecture, and in my hands, photojournalism, and you'll see why in the next news story on a new Fast Sigma Prime. At the end of the day, I doubt you'll see a 12 1.2, but if anyone can make it happen, it's Canon. Now, what do you think? Are these real? Or are they not real? They're real oh. and they're spectacular. Let me know down below. Next up, this isn't a room patent filing. This is an actual real deal lens introducing the Sigma 14 millimeter 1.4 DG DN These nuts art and I have one. Now before I show you what I've shot, Sigma has one customer in mind for this lens, astrophotographers. I mean their press release flat out says it's designed specifically for astrophotography. So I shot astrophotography, right? Wrong. Why would I do that? I don't know. Other than living nowhere close to actual dark skies, I'm afraid of going somewhere secluded on my own, you know, cause my ass is so good looking. You done taking the wrong turn. Nonetheless, here's some samples of astrophotography that Sigma supplied. All they really need is some Skittles added. Dan, Skittles. Boom. But what I did shoot were wide angle stadium photos at the Philadelphia Phillies, as well as union games, as well as a few photojournalistic shots on the field before the game. And I was not expecting the results that I got. The wide angle stadium photos are colorful and tech freaking sharp and perfect for banging out an edit with some Skittles. Bam, bam, just like that. The shots at 1.4 create nice separation that's hard to attain at F4, let alone 2.8. Let me show you. This is at 1.4, now 2.8, now F4. Crazy the difference that a stop or two makes, isn't it? Now I should also mention, as expected, it's not fast focusing due to its size, weight, and the fact that there's 19 freaking elements. 19! And it's even not even the periodic table. It's also limited to roughly 15 frames per second on the A1. But enough about actually using it in the real world, let's hear about some of its features. There's a tripod socket for mounting directly to the tripod, a manual focus lock function, lens heater retainer, rear filter holder, new front cap with filter slots, new lock mechanism, and thorough aberration correction. No one is making a lens like this. Not Nikon, not Canon, not Sony, not even Tamron. It's really trippy. And when I first heard about this lens, I was like, I don't wanna test it. But then Steven said you could use it here and here, and I was like, well, go ahead and send it out. And man, am I glad that I used it. I thought that a 14 1.4 wouldn't be useful, 
but I was proven wrong. The Sigma 14 1.4 Art is a winner in my book. Now get ready to fork over $1,600 because that's what it costs if you want to own one. We'll talk more about this lens and the rest of the photo news from this week's Photo News Fix on the next Fronos Photo Raw Talk podcast, which you can get wherever you get your podcast by searching Fronos Photo Raw Talk or head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast. And finally, Apple. On Monday, Apple held their WWDC keynote, and by keynote, they ran a two hour and six minute video showcasing new products from laptops to desktops to software updates, and of course, the one more thing. Now, I guess it's easier for them to pre film these things these days instead of doing them live. Now, on the other hand, I fell asleep at my desk and woke up sometime after they announced the one more thing. Boring. Apple introduced a new 15 inch MacBook Air, updated Mac Studio, and even a new Mac Pro, all with Apple Silicon, thus finishing the transition away from Intel. The Mac Studio, which was already a powerhouse, now gets updated with the M2 Max and M2 Ultra options and starts at $19.99 for an M2 Max, and Max is out at $87.99 for a fully loaded M2 Ultra. Honestly, for the power that you're getting, the prices seem more reasonable than in the past. Now, what I find interesting is that Apple updated the Mac Pro Tower, and it fully maxed out, cost only $11,799. No, I say only because I dropped over $14,000 for the last Mac Pro Tower a few years ago, and now an M2 Mac Air probably can outperform it. Sucker! No biggie. Rich, but now onto the one more thing, which you've probably heard all about. The Apple Vision Pro, a $3,500 VR slash AR head mounted computer slash workstation slash entertainment device slash 3D camera slash porn hub slash to be determined if it will be a success or not first generation product. Now there's no denying that this thing is cool based on the demo, but how does it work in reality? Well, a bunch of tech reviewers got to go eyes on with it and seem to think that it gets many things right, but still leaves them with a ton of questions. I should mention that Apple isn't planning on selling the Vision Pro until 2024, which will give the developers time to create some killer apps. But what has me the most interested is using it as an extension of my display. Apple says you can look at your Mac Pro screen and that becomes one of the screens in VR that you can work off of. Now there's no remote, there's no haptic feedback, there's no gloves. It simply works with hand gestures like this. It also works with your eyes as well as voice commands. There's an external battery that will give you a whopping two hours of usage, but it seems that this version is really meant to be used around a power source for now. And the last thing I'll mention is it can act as a 3D camera for capturing photos and videos. Now there wasn't much information about that yet, but I'm not sure that that's gonna take off at all, at least in gen one, Plus, does it even shoot raw? There's so much more to talk about, but so little time in Photo News Fix. We'll go deeper on this week's raw talk for sure. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.